third in the West, 39 and 19, 26, 12, and 9. I mean, he puts these numbers up in his sleep. Second in PER, fifth in EPM, fourth in estimated wins added, plus 7.8 on offense, which is tied first. Uh, I, I mean, Nikola Jokic has been un- unbelievable. He's shooting 58% on his mid range shots. Just absurd efficiency. And he's another guy that, you know, he's not having his best season, but the season he's at right now is up there with the seasons he's had when he's won MVP. And he might finish third in this race just because yeah. if Luca goes on a win streak, him and SGA, I think, are the one and two for the award. Mm. When you watch that Warrior game the other night and you see that type of defense in the interior in the paint, and then you see Jokic just completely pick it apart, take care of it, 30 points, and a pretty comfortable win with 16 assists, oh, by the way, as well, and just two turnovers. It is that reminder that Nikola Jokic just goes to the motions a lot of the time in the regular season, mm-hmm. and yet he's still sleepwalking his way to 26, 12, and damn near 10 assists on 65% true shooting. But I think the biggest thing is in those games, you're reminded of how great he can be when he really wants to take it to his absolute best. The difference to me, though, and this is why I view Jokic only third in my ballot, is just because of the fact last couple of years he's had to do more. 2022, you're starting Will Barton on that team. And matter of fact, you look at that entire roster, over half of them are out of the NBA right now. Yet Jokic made a 46-win team by his presence alone. Last year, MPJ and Jamal Murray did come back, but they're shaking off rust the first half of the season. Jamal hadn't played in a year and a half, and Jokic had to take a backseat role as a scorer, changing his game yet again, to be able to compromise with those two guys to get a rhythm earlier in the year. And then this year, you have those guys healthy, and they're not shaking off the rust they once were. So the difference to me in Jokic's case is just the fact life has been a lot easier. Whereas with Shea, he's had to do something a lot more drastic and a lot more unique, and it makes the season just mean a whole lot more. And maybe this is fair, maybe it isn't. Because Jokic is a two-time MVP, you expect him to have an even better MVP season in order to win the award again. I don't think it's totally fair, but it plays a role in all of our psyches, I'm sure, because it's just another amazing season in Jokic, the same way it was for Duncan and all the other great bigs in the past when they did it year in and year out. The Jokic conversation is not about winning MVP this year. It's not even about making a case for it. You mentioned Maybe. something good. You mentioned his teammates when he won his second MVP, that is, mm-hmm. right? Uh when Jokic won his sev- second MVP, Nikola Jokic's teammates, when he won his second MVP, Aaron Gordon started 75 games. He's a great player, great in his role. Monte Morris, backup point guard. Will Barton, not in the league. Jeff Green, veteran for the Rockets. What is he really doing for them? Nothing. Austin Rivers, out of the league. MPJ, only started Nine games that year. Only played nine games that year. Jermichael Green, not in the league. Devon Reed, not in the league. Bones Holland, on the bench, getting no minutes. Facundo Campazzo, not in the league. DeMarcus Cousins, not in the league. Bryn Forbes. I mean, Bryn Forbes just got arrested. Prison. P.J. Dozier, not in the league. I mean, the the guys that Jokic was carrying this year, averaging 27, 14, and 8, and he was doing something remarkable when on his way to the second MVP. And even though they didn't win a whole bunch, they were 48 and 34. They yeah, finished 48. six in the Western Conference. What he did, given his supporting cast, was remarkable. Mm-hmm. And that's why he won MVP. And the fact that all these guys that he took on his way to win MVP, most of them are not in the league. I mean, it speaks to his greatness. It does, because when he was off the floor, that was the worst team in the NBA. And you're right, it was 48 wins, even closer to 15 and 46. And I forget last year, because like last year he was my MVP, despite the fact he didn't win. These last four years, it's one of the greatest peaks we've ever seen. And because of the consistency, the durability, and the playoff performances, not just last year, but in 2020 as well, how far is Jokic from the top 20 all time? It's just a matter of time to me. And he's 29 years old. I don't know how much longer he wants to play for just – Gain a read off of who he is as a person. Does he want to play the 37? I doubt so. But what we're watching from Jokic right now, you could say it's similar to Giannis, but I really believe that you can still game plan against Giannis and limit him in the series. Yes. With Jokic, there's nothing you can do to stop him. No. And that's the difference to me in who is the better player, but also 
why he would have a better case despite having very similar accolades, damn near identical accolades, minus a D point. Well, you bring up a, a good case or you bring up a good point because I think the conversation about Nikola Jokic this season, it's not about MVP. It's about the Nuggets. And they're the team that we all clearly trust the most to make it to the finals and to win a championship and to two-peat. Nikola Jokic, he's been coaching his regular season, still putting up top three numbers. Yes. But in the playoffs, we understand he could take it to a different level. If Nikola Jokic goes on a playoff run, wins a championship, two peats, wins another finals MVP, he's mm. a top 15 player ever. Mm. He, he moves past Dirk. a bunch of great players. He moves past Dirk Nowitzki. He moves past Kevin Durant. He moves past Giannis, even though you might argue he's already over Giannis, but whatever. He right. moves past Dirk. He moves past Dwayne Wade. He moves past Kevin Garnett. Mm-hmm. Okay. He moves past Carl Malone, in my opinion, yes. with, with the championships 100%. But he does, for as much as I don't like him, he does have a unique case. He played for 17 years in Elite. Life. Yeah, of course. Uh, the players that I think he doesn't move past, it's going to take a, a, a couple more things to get past him. Hakeem Olajuwon. Yeah. But he's knocking on that door. I think Jokic, now he puts himself in a conversation with Steph Curry. Because Steph Curry and Jokic, both two-time MVPs, Curry has four championships. Jokic, if he goes on a run, would have two, but right now he has one. Mm -hmm. But the case for Jokic is that you can argue if he wins two championships, his championships are more meaningful. Yeah. Because Steph Curry won two with Kevin Durant, and for the first one in 2015, he wasn't Finals MVP. He should have been. Jokic, but... Yeah, he should have been. Jokic was a two-time Finals MVP. And he led a team and didn't have another top All 15 star. player All on star. time playing with him. Exactly. He didn't. So I think that's the case for Jokic. And you can make that mm -hmm. argument for him over Steph Curry. I still would have Steph Curry over Jokic. Akeem Olajuwon, two times finals MVP, two time Depoy, 12 time All yeah. NBA. Uh, Jokic got to get some things to get to Hakeem too, but. Jokic becomes a top 15 player unanimously mm. all time if he goes on a playoff run and wins a championship. It's crazy to think Nikola Jokic with a championship this season would pass Jerry West in titles. He would pass Turk in titles, Kevin Garnett. All of these players are a top 15 like you alluded to. And if the biggest question is longevity. We've seen him for five years now playing all NBA level. And he's still just 29 years old. If you were to retire tomorrow, right, going out on top as the best player in the NBA for the last three years to me, I would have him top 15 as well. But I think you can make an even more convincing case that he could be above Wilt Chamberlain because of the fact that in the same exact way that Wilt was the most dominant player individually in his era, Nikola Jokic was different in the sense that for his entire career, he made everybody better. Yeah. Wilt for only a few seasons when Alex Hannum was hired back in 67, they won a championship the Sixers did. That was his first ring, and that was when Wilt started to evolve. Thinking basketball, the book highlights it very well as more of a passer and playmaker instead of being just an isolationist. So if Nikola Jokic is making everybody around him better and he's the better teammate, just the, the better offensive engine in and of itself, you could say that as a player, he's better than Wilt's. And if that's the case with the same amount of championships that he could be above him as well on that top 15, top 12 range, I've got Wilt personally number 12. 